What's going on guys? My name is Marcel, welcome to my YouTube channel One Dapper Street. Today we're going to talk about fashion trends for men for the spring and summer of this year, 2023. So today is a fashion video and not a style video. Fashion is timely and style is timeless. But as we will discover with the myriad of trends that are happening right now, that there's so many that honestly every, every fashion trend is almost like a different style. But I'm excited to uh, walk through that with you guys. We're gonna look at silhouettes, at colors, at prints. We're also gonna look at accessories, ways to actually put the outfits together. And then ideally, we're gonna kind of drill it down to things that are actually wearable and how to make them a bit more wearable because we'll be pulling from runway images as well as street style. And the street style images are usually taken at the fashion weeks. Neither of them are the looks that you see on a daily basis walking down the street. So that's where the trends are coming from. But what does that look like for you? With each of the trends, I'm gonna hopefully help you a little bit on how you can make them work. A big call out that belongs, in my opinion, into every trend video or uh, blog post or Instagram post. You do not have to follow these. These are things that are happening and they're likely gonna influence the things that you can buy in the stores. But style is personal, bottom line. Fashion trends are fashion trends, but your style is your personal style. So you need to decide what works for you in a way that it works for you or just leave it be. I'm gonna reach ahead, there's a, there's a Western trend going on. I'm not gonna be wearing a whole lot of cowboy type stuff. It's just not me, but the trend is there regardless. So with that said, big disclaimer, let's get started and take a look at the first one, which is the retro 90s trend. It has been around, it has been happening for a couple of years now. That's what we owe the uh, more relaxed silhouettes that we're seeing to. But what does that look like right now? Aside from the more relaxed silhouette and all the things that you kind of expect from a 90s retro trend, you also have some more retro patterns like boulder gingham patterns that we saw a lot on the runway. You have uh, a lot of stripes, which I don't know if they're retro, they're kind of timeless. I mean, both of those are really just patterns of fabrics, but they were very prominent then. There's been a fairly large emphasis on childhood and adolescence, like whether that be school uniforms or actually somewhat childlike patterns or prints on t-shirts, sweaters, um, whether that's a broken skateboard as part of your outfit. I don't know how that necessarily uh, is gonna work on a daily basis, but there's been a big focus on that. I think uh, a large part of that is the nostalgia. The world is a crazy place right now. It's so globalized. There's so many issues going on all over the world, all at the same time. And I think a large part of what we're seeing right now is the nostalgic element of let's go back to simpler times. So that's why we have that even stronger pull back to the 90s. If we're talking about, you know, my generation, I was born in 91 and other people that lived in the 90s and had their moment there. So um, that's a big trend still. Within that, I also wanna include a few specific things. Number one, trench coats. Even for the spring and in lighter fabrics are a large trend, at least on the runway. So is leather, which is not something that you normally wear. Both trench coats and leather, maybe in the spring when it's still a bit chillier, but not in the summer. But we're seeing a lot of looks that have leather on leather, uh, shorts with a trench coat paired. So it could be something that is happening through the summer as well. And then the biggest one would be the return of the blue jean, which this year I feel like jeans have been fairly chill. But now we have that blue jean back, of course, in a more relaxed silhouette. And also that denim on denim look, the Canadian tuxedo that uh, was also popping eight years ago or so, six, seven, eight years ago. Um, so that's coming back. We've seen that on the runway as well. So how do you make this work for you? Pretty easy. A bit more relaxed with your silhouettes, embrace the denim, embrace the leather. I think leather can be a really fun thing to play with as I'm sitting here in my leather, faux leather, but leather pants nonetheless. I think that's a really fun way to, to uh, work with it because they're not crazy. Like these are black slim fitting pants that happen to be leather. So there's definitely some room to work with. Trench coats are easy enough. A lot of you probably already have a trench coat in your closet, but not the traditional one. We're looking for lighter, flowier fabrics that allow uh, for them to be actually worn in the spring and summer. Now, a quick note, I think personally, I'm gonna bring tailoring back a lot in the spring and the summer um, in that still slim fit. I just really like that. I miss it, I miss dressing up, I miss feeling dapper. It's a central part of this YouTube channel's name. So I'm gonna bring that back, but uh, talking about trends, that relaxed suit, relaxed tailoring is a big trend. Uh, think those like 40s and 50s suits that aren't necessarily baggy, they still fit nicely, but they have much more relaxed pants, still like a half or a full break, 
but that's what's happening a lot um, on the runway at least so tailoring is looking like that but tailoring can also get a bit more sexy and that's point number three that I'm trying to like drill all of these big trends down and kind of make groups so group number three would be sexy what does that mean? It means for one that you can wear your suit without a shirt. You can wear a lot of things without a shirt. At least if you look at the runway images, apparently no one's wearing a shirt anymore, which is fine by me. I like that look and it does keep you a bit cooler, but um, not necessarily everybody's cup of tea, especially if you're not super confident in your own skin. That's obviously not a look you're gonna wanna go for, but there's other ways that you can incorporate that. There's still a whole lot of tank tops and sleeveless tops that are definitely trending. It can even be a vest that you wear just the vest rather than the whole, you know, get up that the vest is usually a part of. There's also a big trend in crop tops, which one could argue is sexy if someone is attracted to that, but sexy only in the way that it actually is showing some midriff, it's showing more skin. Deep v-necks, v-neck lines, which I'm not the biggest fan of a v-neck line, but if you go a little deeper and actually start showing even more skin, Again, within the realm of sexy, right? So that's another way to go. If you wanna show some skin but still have fabric on top, there's a lot of mesh tops and crochet tops that show a little bit of skin but still cover you a bit more. It's a more specific look. I don't know if it's for you, but I don't actually even know if it's for me. Crochet probably more so than mesh, but um, actually something I think I'm gonna play with this uh, spring and summer, but not, uh, you know. We're not there yet, this is just in theory. For the lower half, short shorts are still having a moment. They have been over the past couple seasons, but they're gonna come back and they're gonna get shorter. And then there's even more extreme, I'd argue, sexy trends, like uh, actually some BDSM references and some, some uh, you know, jock straps and whatnot. So like on the runway at least, it got very hectic, which is, at least for me, not wearable on a daily basis but it is tying into something else that we'll get to in just a little bit. Next trend we've got, next group is Western. That means cowboy shirts, flared pants, maybe even cowboy boots, hats. Not for me, um, personally not for me. I might play around with it a little bit. I always think it's like for me personally, I like playing around with different things, with new things. So uh, I might play around with it and see if it can integrate into what I'm wearing a bit. Maybe just like a flared pant silhouette on, on a suit, something like that, but it's not gonna be crazy for me. I don't know if it is for you, but like I said, a simple way to do it is a pair of flared jeans. That would be a, a simple way to go. A cowboy shirt with an otherwise, uh, I mean a cowboy shirt with the flared jeans and you're already basically a cowboy at that point. So not my favorite, but um, had to mention it regardless. Another trend that's sticking around is athleisure. That means the proper athleisure that you know, you know, fabrics that are super comfortable, super stretchy, that you could work out in that look when you wear them out like a normal casual outfit. So that whole entire era is still continuing on. But even more so on the runway, we now see this like fitness trend. So we're seeing track suits, track pants in a way that is a lot more fashion. So athleisure kind of, at least on the runway, grew into something that's a lot more interesting um, and a lot more standout than what we know athleisure to be, which is primarily focused around comfort while still looking good. This would be very much about the look itself. Before we get into colors and patterns, one more thing that I wanna call out that's having a big moment, I'm noticing this in my wardrobe, I'm actually gonna do a video on this next week. Cargo pants and then also similar but different carpenter pants, so work utility pants are having a big moment, cargo shorts, there's a bunch of different iterations of that. Really what it means is like a pant or a short with pockets. That could be simple with one pocket, two pockets, or 15 different pockets that actually make up the short itself. There's a bunch of crazy stuff happening, which I think is cool. Um, if you, you know, I think a, a statement pair of pants is always something that you can play around with. If you do that, try and keep the rest of the outfit a bit more minimal. I would argue that makes it easier, but um, just keep that in mind, cargo carpenter also going back to the 90s thing. You see that all of these are kind of related, also going back to the relaxed thing, even though I mentioned the relaxed trend specifically within tailoring, obviously the baggier silhouettes, the more relaxed silhouettes apply to pretty much everything I'm talking about. Now in terms of colors, colors you wanna go bold and you wanna mix those bold colors if you want to follow trends, if you don't, I, I won't be mixing bold colors, I don't think. Generally, I lean more towards neutrals, earth tones, um, and all that, which you can still very much wear without it being trendy. You'll still look very good this spring and summer. But I'm gonna probably play around with adding a bold color, a pop of color here or there, whether that's a top, a jacket, pants, shorts, footwear, we'll see. 
but the bolder the better if you want to follow the trends and then um, you know you can watch my my, my uh, video on color theory which hopefully would help you in combining different bold colors uh, just to understand a bit better what colors work together and like what quality within the one color works well with what quality in the other it gets a little crazy trust me that video I don't know here there I'll put a link down there as well um, that is uh, hopefully gonna help shed some light on that topic but then a simple way to do it is to go monochrome in those bold colors there's a lot of designers and hopefully also normal stores that have affordable prices that are gonna offer a lot of sets so that might be an easy way to pull that off and then one color stood out in particular that's purple slash magenta um, think Harry Styles, um, that whole vibe. I think purple can be a really fun color and we haven't seen a whole lot of that in the last few years. I would argue, at least not me. So that would be one color I want to call out specifically. For bold prints, you have the green light as well. A similar thing as with the bold colors, you can mix them, it can get really crazy. It's not necessarily for me. I do like a bold pattern, but I always do dress it down, so it's a little easier to pull off. And uh, specifically, floral patterns, once more, are trending in the spring, which, surprise. Like, springtime brings the flowers, like to be wearing something floral kind of goes hand in hand. It almost feels natural. It's something that we, we uh, I at least, get kind of attracted to in the spring. Like it's something that makes me happy and it makes me feel like I look good as well. So, so much for prints. Sustainability is still trending, which is lovely for the planet. And um, sometimes not so lovely, unfortunately, for your wallet because a lot of sustainable brands have a bit of a higher price point. Nonetheless, you can go thrifting and specifically that like patchwork aesthetic is definitely trending as well. That's something where you're using old fabrics, old pieces, Combining them into something new, bonus is sustainable, bonus is it's unique, and bonus is it really can be very, very light on your wallet. Now the last one before we check off the accessories is a trend of gender neutral outfits. It's only to be expected with the shift that we're seeing in society where everybody's just a lot more accepting of different lifestyles and there's a lot more space for people to just wear whatever they want actually. So what is gender neutral really look like. Uh, it can be fairly obvious with skirts. I would argue even flowier outfits that are mostly silk is not something that we're necessarily used to see on men. That is honestly a silk key outfit can look incredible, can look high fashion, elegant, expensive and feel really, really good. So that's something I would like to play with this spring and summer silky fits. And then even like smaller details like a manicure, painting your fingernails. I know so some of the manliest guys I know actually are now painting their fingernails so it's fun i actually have thought about it but i i kind of don't know what i would go like it doesn't quite work for me this trend in particular also kind of ties in to that childhood that that careless that adolescent i don't give a hoot about what anybody thinks i'm just gonna paint my fingernails so it all connects and now let's finish off on accessories. A couple of necklaces that stood out um, are chunky necklaces and pearl necklaces. I've talked to you a lot about pearl necklaces. Also goes within the uh, realm of gender neutral uh, outfits slash accessories in this case. And then more around the neck, we're seeing ties come back. In the realm of suiting, you can now wear a shirt with it if you so choose and a tie. There's been a lot of ties on the runway. Um, if that's too much for you, there's silk scarves also that can always elevate a very simple outfit and kind of give it like a little personality, a little edge, make it a little bit more special. And then crossbody bags. I wear them all the time. I absolutely love them. They're still having a moment. You see them in the street style, you see them on the runway. They're a great way to keep your pockets empty and um, have a little bit more storage as you walk around lightly dressed, especially in the summer. I really like them. They're very utilitarian. At the same time, they can really complete an outfit and give it a little bit more of an edge. And with that, we are done. I told you it was gonna be a little broad. Um, I, hope a, I hope I could at least encapsulate a little bit what is going on and um, make it simple enough for you to one, understand, and two, understand how to make that work for you. And then once again, three, give you permission to say, I don't care about any of this. You do you, fashion or your outfit is supposed to be making you feel good when you step outside the door, giving you the confidence to go about your day effortlessly. So that's what I'm here for. I wanted to do a trend video because I hadn't done one in a while. I am looking forward to um, very likely going back to the fashion weeks in the summer, which is in June, around that time. 
So if you like this fashion video, please let me know. I am focusing on style, but I would like to do more of these. If you guys are into them, it's fun to do a little research. And it's also good for me. Like, I do this anyway. I do want to know what's going on. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys very soon with the next one, actually on Wednesday. And until then, as always, stay dapper, guys. Bye.